everybody wants to know and don't know how to ask and mm -hmm. every contractor probably in a lifetime uh, trying to figure it out. Why contractors cannot buy directly from manufacturers? I, I have a lot of brand new startups mm -hmm. calling me on consulting calls every week and it's like, Dimitri, why I cannot go straight to GF or Icon and just mm -hmm. stock it? And people think that they uh, will save a lot of money buying direct. It's, uh, I think it's entrepreneurial spirit, cut the middleman, yeah. which I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. Explain why it's so complicated and why manufacturers would not do business. Even, I mean, if you do $50 million, you still go through middleman. Well, we'll go back to what I talked about a little earlier on, that, that distribution provides for manufacturing cash flow, whereas contractors, uh, you know, DSO, day sales outstanding, is very important at the distribution level. The average in the industry is probably something like 45 days, but there's always a certain amount of bad debt that a, a, a distributor has to incur. And I think it's important to note that bad debt is also has to be, you know, that comes out of their profits, which means they have to raise their price a little bit to cover the bad debt. What kind of numbers of bad debt have you seen percentage wise? Well, I sales? think the industry average is somewhere between a quarter and a half percent, you know, but you, but you have to, I mean, that's but you, something. But you're running on 5%, so. Uh, yeah, it it's becomes a big deal. It's maybe 10% of your profits are, are, are being lost in bad debt. You know, so that's a big deal. I think from a contractor point of view, why that's important is it's important, you know, if you want to elevate the industry and if you're looking at always uh, operating your business above industry standards, pay your bills on time. And if you have a, and, and I think one of the things distribution has done a little bit of a disservice, not all of them, and I think this has changed, is they keep contractors in business longer by extending them more credit, helping them get out of debt. Uh, I think the most important thing a, a contractor can do for his business is pay his bills on time. And they should shout that from the mountaintops when they do. We pay our bills on time. When you go into a consumer and, and you, or you sit down and say, check with our suppliers, they're going to tell you that we're gold. They love us because we pay our bills on time because that's the foundation. If a contractor is paying his bills on time, everything else will fall into place as far as how he operates but his if business. But you if you're doing 15, 20 million you know, a year, mm -hmm. Why cannot can you go to ICO? Okay. Or? Good question. I, I had a uh, I had a contractor um, back when I had my distribution business uh, come to me, and he wanted to buy direct, and he wanted me to teach him how. <laughs> he was a customer of mine. I okay, we'll go through this, and I sat down and I actually opened my books up and showed him how. You know, I'm, I'm paying three hundred thousand dollars for a boom truck. Okay, and um, and I'm. Uh, uh, you know, I, I have inventory. I have a building I've put the inventory in. Sometimes inventory gets broken. Sometimes inventory gets stolen. There's all these factors that you have to factor in. Now, I'm servicing 500, 1,000 contractors. So I've got a lot of contractors coming and going. Now, you're only servicing your business, and you're going to do all the things I'm doing. You, you can't possibly afford to do this. My costs, my expenses of running my business are about 17% of each sale. And that's probably about the industry average. No contractor, if he's only doing this for his business, can do it for that cheap. So now, if you're going to buy direct truckloads, um, let's say, let's say even GAF would sell you at the same price as a distributor. Will they? You know, uh, yeah, will they? No, no. I mean, it's a moot, it's a moot question from the beginning, but I want I'm, I'm trying to explain as to why. But uh, let, let's say that they would. Now. You're not a distributor, you're a contractor. So, so you're buying these shingles direct, but you're only buying them for what you're going to sell. You're not buying them to sell to every contractor in your marketplace or everyone you can sell to. So um, what do you do in the wintertime when you bought too much, too many shingles? And you've got to buy truckloads of shingles because they'll only sell truckloads. What if you only need one square to finish a job? You know, you got to buy a truckload. You, you, you no longer have that ability to go down to ABC, Home Depot on a Saturday and pick up one bundle of shingles. Now, if you have it in your warehouse, great, but now you've got to kind of predict what you're going to sell ahead of time because you've got to buy it long before you sell it. And it's easy to do if you're homogenized with 500,000 contractors that you're selling on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you're only buying and selling for yourself, uh, you can't do it for 17%, you know, assuming that you're going to buy at the same price. Now, going back to what I said, manufacturers um, are not going to sell you direct because they don't want to put up with credit headaches. Um, you know, the cash flow is the main thing that a distributor does for a manufacturer. 
um, uh, one of the main things, maybe not just the main thing. Uh, but uh, um, so you're going to buy from a distributor direct truckloads coming in. Maybe you're going to buy for 10% better, but it's going to cost you probably over 20% to service that business. So when you do the math in, in your head, which it doesn't take long, you kind of figure out that distribution is giving me a pretty good deal. It may look like I could do better. And, there, and there's a few contractors out there that inventory their own shingles, one we just talked about. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day, a distribution has the efficiency and economy of scale that a contractor never can, even at 20 million. No, your typical distribution yard is probably doing somewhere in the range of at the low end, 10 million, but the distribution yards in the Twin Cities here, for instance, doing 30, 40 million, 50 million out of one yard oh. in sales. So if you're, if, if you're a $20 million contractor, take a third of that. So you know, let's say $7 million worth of purchases a year. That's, you know, and, and if you compare that to the, the 10 yards in the Twin Cities all doing 50 million, that's 500 million. That's a pretty small percentage and you just you just can't be that efficient i'm on beautiful florida today orlando if you guys enjoy this episode as much as i did there's two hours version on our podcast on soundcloud spotify and apple go subscribe to roofing insights podcast if you enjoy uh, listening to smart conversations while you're driving or maybe in the gym uh, Earl world brings tons of value talking about relationships between manufacturers contractors and suppliers you especially if you want to grow your business will get a lot out of it uh, it will help you negotiate better deals for your business uh, those relationships are very sophisticated I want you to learn about them the history of them how they develop uh, Earl as you know and you will hear it in the uh, podcast episode uh, worked in the industry since 89 he started roof depot they sold later to beacon i want you to check out our podcast we're gonna upload exclusive interviews there first you will see a lot of clips here on youtube and facebook but don't miss out on roofing insights podcast see you guys